When a sport gets to a certain point, things start breaking. And a bouncing puck, I think again, another own goal. I mean, take out the best hockey players in the world, put them in the same game, and without a doubt, at least one of them is breaking the game. As in, manipulating the existing game within the existing rules to gain an advantage. And that's the thing, with hockey or basically any other sport in the world, players are doing anything in their power to gain an advantage. Whether it is Rob Ray literally lubing himself up before fights, or perhaps Wayne Gretzky forcing his teammates to take penalties so that he could have more space on the ice. Rule changes are inevitable, especially when a player single-handedly forces them. A lot of you guys missed one of my last videos as the YouTube algorithm decided to take a nice, hot, steamy dump on my channel. But not only did we hit 50k this month, we got featured on the YouTube trending page. Love you guys. Wayne Gretzky. Glensky. Wayne Glensky. Wayne, oh baby. Quite possibly the most dominant athlete from any sport in history. I mean, in the NBA, you have LeBron and Jordan. In soccer, you have Ronaldo, Messi, Pele. Debates that lead to massive arguments. Because to be honest, you can't really go wrong either way. But in the NHL, nobody has even sniffed the dominance that Gretzky displayed in the 80s. And with that, Gretzky was the master manipulator. I mean, in 1986, Gretzky had nearly 75 more points than second place in the scoring race. We have been losing our mind about McDavid having 21 more points in 2021. And what is perhaps the most prolific rule change that Gretzky would single-handedly invent was coincidental penalties. Which means if two players receive a penalty in the same play, instead of both players going to the box and playing four on four, the players still go to the box, but the game remains five on five. And what's hilarious about this penalty is it kind of broke my mind. When I was a little kid, I, I just couldn't get it. So you're telling me two players are going into the box, but the game doesn't change? And the reason for this confusion is Wayno. And that's because if you even gave Wayne Gretzky an extra inch of space, he was punishing you on the scoreboard. Thus, it clicked in. If Gretzky can get his teammates to forcefully take a penalty, and the game goes 4-on-4, four four, which is equivalent to 5-on-3 for Gretzky. So as long as they're taking penalties, Gretzky is on a power play all game. And But what is absurd is basically Wayne Gretzky is the only one who benefited from this rule change. Meaning, even 40 years later, we are following a rule change that was created for one player. Absurd. Speaking of greatness, one of the best ways to naturally find greatness on the ice is by looking at who on the team is getting the most abuse on a night-to-night -night basis. And that's because of competition. If you are better than everybody on the ice, that is going to make them very, very mad. Especially with professional athletes who dedicate their entire life to a sport just to get showed up by a single player. And for Sidney Crosby's case, hate him or love him, but my man was absolutely abused his entire hockey career. Even when he was a child, I mean, imagine being a highly ranked 16 year old hockey player in Canada and a random 12 year old shows up and scores 5 goals against your team. Crosby was the number one target in every game basically he's ever played in. And well, in order for Crosby to survive this abuse, he himself had to develop a chippy if not flat out dirty side to his game. Now, I'm not saying I agree with it at all, but I can definitely understand it. And throughout his entire hockey career, Crosby really took up slashing. For the most part, pretty harmless, but you're definitely gonna piss off everybody. Except, sometimes, you accidentally literally cut somebody's finger off. In March of 2017, Crosby, and I'm not even kidding, would literally slash off Mark Mathot's finger. Like, excuse me? And not only did Crosby not receive a penalty, he wasn't even suspended. But the thing is, even though there wasn't a direct rule change from the situation, behind the scenes, refing would change drastically. They would have to completely rethink what slashing means. And to put this into perspective, in 2013, there was 701 slashing penalties. In 2014, 664. 2015, 717. 2016, 792. Now keep in mind, this event transpired at the end of this season. However, right after the Crosby slashing incident, slashing penalties went from about 700 per season to 1,252 the very next season. Or 
Nearly 600 more slashing penalties being called per season as a direct result of Crosby slashing off someone's finger. Insane. Icing. A simple play. Tired? Ice the puck. Stop their momentum? Ice the puck. In 2021, icing a puck is a safe and harmless way to create a stoppage in play. But what if I were to tell you that icing the puck used to be one of the most dangerous plays in all of hockey? View Exhibition A. In 2013, Yoni Pikkinen racing for the puck would slam into the board so hard that he would shatter his entire heel. Doctors explain this injury to be so absurd. This injury is usually caused by a car crash as it requires that much force. I mean, the average human in good shape can roughly run 20 kilometers per hour. Imagine sprinting full force right into a wall. But picture this, someone like Connor McDavid can nearly skate 50 kilometers an hour. So imagine if you could run two times faster and then sprinted right into that same wall. Because if you didn't, you would allow a prime scoring chance for the opposition, which would cause these crazy corner races every single game, resulting in catastrophic injuries. As Yoni Pikkinen's injury was so brutal, it single-handedly forced him into early retirement at the age of 30, from a play that could be easily avoidable. And as a result, the NHL would completely change how icing works. As we would see the introduction of the hybrid icing system, the same system we have today. A puck gets iced, and if the defender clearly has a step on the opposition, the play gets blown down instantly. But just know, back in the day, this play was a bloodbath. And speaking of injuries, one of the most brutal injuries I have ever witnessed live in the sport of hockey took place on March 8th, 2011. Because in a game versus the Boston Bruins, ironically, on an innocent play, Max Pacioretty would chip the puck around Zdeno Chara. But as Chara went to finish the hit, also if you don't know Chara, not only is he 6'9", nearly 7 feet tall on skates, but my guy is a goddamn unit. And unfortunately for Pacioretty, he would learn about this brute force the hard way. Because in a freak accident, not only did Pacioretty have to accept a full check from the Big Z, but back in the day, boards weren't rounded. And Patches would horrifically get caught on a straight edge of the glass, which divided the benches. And as a result, Patches would suffer a severe concussion on top of literally breaking his neck. Now, thank God Patches would return and would continue to be an absolute stud because this was horrible. And as a result, the NHL would have to completely redesign the way glass and boards work in the NHL. They would start by rounding out all these corners. Because if this were to happen again with round glass, the impact would be way less severe as you would naturally bounce off instead of hitting a brick wall. Around this time, the boards themselves would become more movable, which would drastically reduce impact. Duke watched by Myers to Zetterberg, Scott! And now this one's being waved off. Graham Skeleter will give us the reason as to why. Number 93, enjoy the position the goal race. No goal. Have you ever seen a player standing in a crease and the goal gets waved off and, and wonder why? Well, you can blame this man, Brett Hall. Because during the 1999 playoffs, we would see one of the most controversial plays in NHL history. Because not only was it the playoffs, not only was it the Stanley Cup Finals, but Brett Hall would score a goal standing in the crease in triple OT of Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Finals. As Brett Hall would score this awkward goal to secure the cup. But as he scored, people were irate. And to be honest, it does make sense. Why should a player be able to stand in a goalie's crease and possibly just cause goalie interference? Because well, right after Hall would score the game-winning goal, the NHL would introduce Rule 78, protection of the goaltender, which prohibits players from standing in a goalie's crease on the initial shot. Which should hopefully remove much of this gray area as the crease was bound to be exploited, especially by one of the greatest goal scorers in NHL history. But what is absurd about this rule change if you look closely? It wasn't even really Brett Hall's fault. Buffalo's own defenseman accidentally kicked Hasek, causing way more self-harm and just interference than Hall did. Because after his own player kicked him, Hasek wasn't really able to recover, which allowed Hall to score. It's just hilarious that a rule change this significant, this controversial, wasn't even that clear in the first place. I mean, the Johan Franson one makes way more sense to me at least, he's in the crease, arguably restricting goaltender movement. Whereas Hall, I can kind of see it, but it's not even a good example. Hilarious. 
But if you enjoyed the videos, make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. And as always, thanks for watching.